105.7 The Point is live at Point Fest. Hollywood Undead. It's 105.7 The Point, everything alternative. Donnie backstage at Point Fest. And uh, these guys, the last couple of years that they have been here, have made quite a ruckus at our Point Festival. Uh, part of Hollywood Undead. Gentlemen, what's going on? How are you? How you doing? Hello. So what we have here is questions from your fans. All right, we, we've, we've solicited for them to ask you questions over the internet, so these are all from Hollywood Undead faithful fans that'll be going crazy when you guys are out there later today. Let's do it. All right, here we go. First question comes from Dolores Talley of St. Louis. She said, first, I would like you to know that I think your band rocks. I really love your music. I want to know how you got discovered and what you think you'd be doing now if you hadn't hit it big in the music industry. I don't know. I have nightmares about that every night, so I can't even answer that question. I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> I wake up in my sleep like, if I was in this band, what would I be doing? Uh, that's a good question, and there is no answer to that because we do not know. Well, what about how did you guys get discovered? How did you get found? Um, we, we were in a couple bands before Hollywood Undead, and we uh, kind of went through the motions and got sick of it because it was too, you know, doing the demo tape type stuff, sending it to labels and showcasing. And then when the internet blew up, we just started making music and putting it on the internet because it was such, and it's such a good avenue to fans directly so you don't have to get like a major label involved. And once we got fans there, then labels started paying attention, you know what I mean? So that it kind of was the, the via between us and kids. Did it allow you to be a little bit more selective with the label process, with, with, with finding your, you know, the right spot for Hollywood Undead? Oh yeah, somehow we still picked the wrong one, but yeah. <laughs> so, you know what's weird about the internet, I was gonna throw those out there is it's, it's great for bands who are unsigned, but it's a killer for bands who are signed. It's the strangest thing. Because I mean, it's it's I mean, and it, and it goes along with the people you know taking the music for free and all that kind of thing. It's such a shame because I I, I mean, more than anything else now, I love the way that I can listen to my music. You know what I mean? But it, but there has to be some way out there where you guys don't get left out in the cold. I bought two CDs and it was thirty dollars. The last CD, one was Avenged Sevenfold because you know they're my friends. I support them. And one was another band, and it was $30. And I was like, for two CDs, I was like, no wonder kids steal music. I don't have $30 to buy two CDs. Like, I go nine ninety nine, and that's it. And if it's more yeah. than that, I'm out yeah, the door. I, I'm a firm supporter of that. I don't, I'm the same way. I don't do anything over 10 bucks nowadays. Very good. All right, question number two from uh, Catherine Wiley of Chesterfield. Uh, after you, this is a great one, and I always love to hear answers for this one. After you guys got your first big paycheck, did you buy anything special? A mountain of cocaine. <laughs> it was very special. It was really good stuff. <laughs> I gotta tell you. I just finished the last of it last night. That's why I look like. Sh yeah, you're fine. Oh, you're fine. We're on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the worst thing. Is like we got this like our first signing bonus, and we did the stupidest thing, the most stereotypical thing. We didn't like invest it. We didn't buy anything that was worth anything. We just parted and just wasted all of it. Yeah. I built a, a little dog house of coke and slept in it every night. And when I was wanted to get high, you know, I just picked little pieces up. <laughs> he bought a little beagle that he would sleep with. Him and the beagle would sleep in the dog house. <laughs> <laughs> We're always twitching together. He called him Snoopy. <laughs> now, would you guys like? Would you guys recommend though that when a band gets a signing bonus, that they don't do that? Or are you just saying? No, you know? I, I think I think bands should because ever since we did that, I'm a lot smarter about stuff. So. I think the whole point of getting like a signing bonus or something like that is to go out there and have some fun because we were poor, like we couldn't eat for five years. So I'll finally get some money. Like I don't want to invest it. You know, I want to go like do the things I was never able to do. So I think it's it's okay to do it with that. But then after that, uh, wise them up and you know yeah, watch yourself. To, uh, unless your accounts are rubles, you know we don't we don't do that. Like. Those Russian bastards. Yeah. Well, great use of rubles, man. That's awesome. That'll probably be the only time we get that thrown in there today. <laughs> Sean Yates of Granite City asks, how did you come up with the name Hollywood Undead, and was it uh, the first choice for your band name? It was one of those things where, like, we made our first song. We were going to, like, call it uh, Hollywood because we're talking about Hollywood, and then we like, kind of, like, throwing out names. Let's call ourselves The Undead. But then we showed it to my neighbor, and he read it backwards. He was like, Hollywood Undead. And that's, like, one of those instant things where just, like, a light bulb literally went off over my head. I don't know if it was a light bulb or just a mountain of coke that dropped on me, but mm -hmm. it was one of those things where it was, like, hold like, you know, and people were like, great name, great I don't know. It's gonna happen. Like. Very good, uh, boy. We're talking about rubles and cocaine mentions all over the place. This is good. These, these questions are coming up with good things. We're not even answering the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I spent all my rubles on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ashley Carson of Creve Court says, "What is your guilty pleasure music? Which artist do you love listening to, but wouldn't normally listen to?" I don't have any guilty pleasure music. I don't think I, I don't listen to music much. Oh, one of the guys in our band loves uh, Robin Thicke, which I'm always just like. I don't have anything against the game, but it's so gay, and I'm just, 
I have a real problem with it. It's not that cool, but I, I have the Robin Thicke CD, and I put it in my car because, you know, I put the, the speakers in there, and girls were, like, literally like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And like, That's awesome. I'm like, that literally makes chicks' panties wet. That's why he listens Lucky to Lucky I'm a fag. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jewel, personally. We were talking about it today. Like, Jewel's first record. Just killed it. I, I remember seeing her. I remember seeing her here at a point fest back in the day, and I couldn't get past her jugs. To be very honest with you, she was big. Yeah, I mean, very much so. I want to rubles off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, finally. All right, Josh Tucker of Hillsboro asks. Uh, speaking of chicks, uh, I bet you guys get all the chicks. How many groupies a day creep out and beg to see your tour bus? And the second part, do you have any issues with stalkers? The groupie girls are always like sixteen, so it never really does anything for me. And none of them are male, which also doesn't do anything for me. So I'll let you answer this one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do something with that. Go ahead. I don't even know where to go. I'm actually speechless. I'm like, what am I supposed to say? Like, All right, but what about stalkers? If you, have you, have you, I would imagine that at some point you probably... It, it's such a that. weird thing because, like, for bands, it's not just us. It's every band that these kids love you and you want to give something back to them. But then sometimes once in a while you give something back, like, Oh, here's my email address. Here's my number. Yeah, you're the, thank you for coming for supporting us. But then they just abuse it. You know, you give them an inch, take a mile. It's a very strange thing. Like you love this person for supporting you, but it's like, what are you supposed to do? Like just talk to him every day, all day for the rest of your life. Like, I don't know. It's very weird. You got nice eyes, Donnie. Big well, blues. Like, thank you very much. You got much. that thousand yard stare. You been to prison before? Never once. Your pupils are, pupils are all dilated. You've been doing that coke, <laughs> buddy. Listen, let, your peepers are dilated. <laughs> let me I tell said you something. Pupils. <laughs> Out of everyone your in this peepers. room, there would be no one that would do worse in prison than myself. I mean, it just it just would not be it would not be a good thing. But just be nailing everybody. I'll take it. I would notice you from across the yard and like, damn, who's that kid right there? Well, that's it's good to know that I will have jail love. If and when maybe that sort of situation presents itself. Gentlemen, you are awesome. Thank you for your time. Your interviews. I, I, wanna, I don't even want to go anywhere. Let's just sit here all day. Yeah, well, <laughs> come on, buddy. Your interviews are, ama are amazing. You're always so entertaining. Well, you know, let's say this. The second single on the record is Been to Hell. We played it yes. a couple times. It's freaking awesome. Uh, is it w When you have, you know, uh, a couple of, of really great tracks to choose from, how do you ultimately choose what is the single? You know, honestly, I don't think we can, you can't premeditate with, the, every time I've guessed what the single's going to be, and I'm always wrong. It's kind of one of those things, what the radio likes and stuff like that. It's more up to program directors and so forth and DJs who want, I don't care what they play. If they're playing something, I'm happy. So we don't really care that much, you know, so we don't make like bad songs in my opinion. So if any of them get picked, it's all good with us. And Been to Hell is an awesome song. Yeah, I agree. Dude, so I uh, personally think that's our, the best music video we've ever made. And we did it so low budget, like it was so cheap. And I think it's awesome. Peter North's in it, porn star. Oh, shoots yeah. fat loads. They call him the decorator. He's, he's got an app, by the way. I'm not kidding, dude. <laughs> yeah. The decorator. He's got an app on the iPhone. I don't know if it's out yet because we, we hang out with this guy. And um, he's like, you, you take a picture of someone, you press it, and it just. And so it, it, it got sound bites of him like, oh, yeah, there we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We just sold a bunch of iPhone apps for Peter North. <laughs> that's for sure. Gentlemen, for real, thank you so very much for your time. We cannot wait Cheers, to see man. you again and, and see you in the future. Backstage at Point Fest, Hollywood Undead, everybody.